Thanks, Derek, um, and good morning, everyone. Um, as mentioned, my name is Matt Ogawa, and I'm the Director of Admissions and Recruitment uh, for Portland Community College. Um, I joined PCC uh, in uh, November of this past year, um, and prior to this, um, I worked in college admissions for o Oregon State University. Um, and so um, I have a, a wealth of experience um, in college admissions, both um, at a community college and at a four-year institution. Uh, and I just really want to take the time um, before we get started just to kind of acknowledge and thank all of you for kind of uh, participating in this and learning more about um, Oregon Community Colleges and uh, the Oregon Promise. Um, this is a very exciting time in your life. Uh, and I uh, want to kind of applaud you for kind of seeking out that information just to kind of see uh, what the next steps are in the process and learning more about uh, the admissions process and your next steps. Kayleen? Hi, everyone. My name is Kayleen Schweitzer. And first, I just want to echo everything that Matt said. We're grateful that you're here and that you are joining us today. Um, I'm the Assistant Director of Outreach and Recruitment at Central Oregon Community College in Bend, Oregon. Um, I've been at the college for about um, almost about a year, few months, so fairly new to Central Oregon Community College. Prior to that, I was a school counselor for about six years. Um, so I think between me and Matt, we have a great combination of um, knowledge and we're excited to share that with you. Right. So here's what we're going to go over today. We're going to first kind of just talk about uh, in community college in general, and then kind of just discuss why Oregon Community College could be a good option for you. Uh, we're going to talk about costs and pain for Oregon communities, as well as dual enrollment and partnership programs. Then we'll talk about how to apply, some next steps, and then we'll wrap up with some resources and some questions. So just in general about um, Oregon Community Colleges, um, what a lot of people don't know um, because um, just depending on where they're located and everything um, is that um, community colleges um, are the largest provider of uh, post-secondary education in the, in the nation. And sometimes people don't think of that because maybe their local community college might be smaller in size and they do offer small class sizes. But actually, there are 275,000 students enrolled in Oregon community colleges across the state. And there are over 17 different campuses and 60 different centers in which you can actually take classes that are in person when we are not dealing with this COVID crisis, but also that um, you can take online or do hybrid degree programs and everything. Um, so there really is a lot of different convenience um, that you can kind of take advantage of throughout the, uh, across the state of Oregon uh, through the many different centers, branches, and online programs. Um, so no matter where you are um, in the state of Oregon, you do have a lot of options and variety to choose from between physical locations um, where you can get a full degree, as well as branch uh, uh, centers uh, where you can take classes and everything, um, as well as online. And so uh, there's a lot of different options to choose from. Um, in addition, um, we, uh, to the geographic uh, locations and everything, there's a lot of different variety to choose from programmatically. Um, so uh, what I like about Oregon, or excuse me, the community colleges um, is that you can get um, transfer degrees that you can take uh, to really any college or university and get your four year degree. Uh, but you can also get career or technical degrees that you can go and you can take straight into the workforce. Um, and you can do that within two years or less, you can get your degree or certificate and you can do that all at an affordable price uh, that uh, costs and significantly less compared to uh, attending a four year university uh, or college or going to a private uh, institution. The other thing um, that is great about community colleges is that you um, are also going to get smaller class sizes. Um, and uh, the average class size about at community colleges is roughly around 20 students or so nationally. Um, and so you're going to have the advantage of uh, having those smaller class sizes versus those larger lecture halls. Um, the other thing about uh, community colleges is that they're um, accessible, meaning that they don't um, 
uh, look at GPA or test scores and everything and that they accept everyone. Uh, and, and so if you're looking to one, uh, kind of build upon some credit history and things like that and build on your GPA and everything, um, or you're looking just for the convenience of those smaller classes is because maybe you're not ready for those larger lecture halls, um, Oregon Community Colleges could be a good option for you. Um, lastly, there's a variety of different uh, support programs that are uh, going to help you succeed. There's things like tutoring clubs and free counseling, just depending on the community college that you might be seeking that you should definitely look into, as well as scholarship and cohort programs that I'll talk a little bit later on during the presentation. Yeah, and I just want to speak to, you know, that class size, um, that 20, you know, per class, it really helps with that transition. And also, it allows you to really build relationships with your professors, your instructors, and they're really accessible. So, you know, you can reach them easily through email or just for that support. So that's a huge plus for community colleges. Um, this is just a visual um, that I wanted to show you because it really shows the difference between a university and a community college as far as admissions requirements. So as you can see, community college has open admissions. Um, if you look at the university side, you'll see that it's a lot more selective. So for a public university, um, right now, you know, ACT and SAT might be optional but GPA, essays, they look at years of foreign language, what classes you've taken. And then if you look at private, it gets even more selective. So, you know, again, essays, but also letters of recommendations. So just really selective compared to a community college where it's open admissions. Again, I just wanted you to see this visual. Um, it really highlights the cost difference. Um, so just a few examples that if you see the top where it says community college, you'll see that, you know, it's very affordable. This is an example of COCC. Um, so about 5,500 for one year. And this is just tuition costs. So I'm not including any room or board or other fees, but that's about the cost for um, an average community college. And then if you look at public universities, you'll see that's gonna be about two to three times the tuition costs. This example is from University of Oregon and about 10,000 for the year. And that's not, or sorry, 10,700. And that's not even including anything with room and board. So that can go up, you know, up to 30,000. So then looking at private universities, you can see the cost even goes up about 10 times. Um, so really a big difference and it shows the affordability and the great option that community college is. Um, and just to add to the cost difference, um, that's, um, on the slide there, you can see three terms or two semesters. That's one year. Um, so multiply that times four years, right? And that's kind of what you'll get as the cost. Or for community colleges, you can multiply that times two years and then um, take the two-year rate for um, transferring that to a four-year institution and just uh, see how much uh, in tuition dollars that you can save alone by doing two years at a community college and then two years at a public or private institution. So um, just to kind of sum up why Oregon Community College is. One, um, if you're transferring to a four-year institution, of course, those cost savings. Um, two, you can begin your degree um, with um, classes that you can really take anywhere. So say maybe your goal is not to just do the two years. You only want to do one, right? Um, you're still wavering between a different major and you're not quite sure uh, which uh, major you want to choose from or you just want to take your general education classes. Um, you can spend a year figuring that out and sorting that out and then transfer to an institution. Um, so you're not just taking classes that are just a waste of time, right? The other thing um, you can do um, is um, is is really kind of narrowing down your major choices and, and really selecting a class um, that and classes that are right for you and then get ready for a major that's right for you once you are ready. Um, again, the smaller class sizes and, and figuring out your path. The other thing that you can do at a community college is going straight into the workforce. So, so some students may not even want to go and get their four-year degree, right? And that's okay. Uh, a two-year degree or a certificate 
um, that takes you straight into the workforce um, are great options for people. And that's something that you can do if you want to do that. And there's hundreds of different programs um, such as a aviation, auto mechanics, welding, those types of programs that community colleges offer that aren't offered at a uh, community or excuse me, a four year institution. So now we just want to talk a little bit about how you can pay for Oregon Community College. Um, I'm going to start with something called gift money. Some people might call this free money. I like to call it gift money because someone is paying for that money, even if it's not you. Um, so this would be things like grants and scholarships. So some types of grants are the Pell Grant, the Oregon Promise that we are going to go into next, um, the Oregon Opportunity Grant. You know, most of these are based on need uh, and they're great opportunities and I highly recommend that you're going for these. Um, scholarships, so there's academic scholarships, sports scholarships, um, first generation leadership scholarships. Um, all I can say is really apply for those um, OSAC is a great option where you do one application and then it allows you to apply for about 500 different scholarships. So now we're just going to have you watch a short video on the Oregon Promise. Attention high school seniors and those completing their GED. Would you go to college if you could get help to pay for tuition? Find out if the Oregon Promise can help you. Oregon Promise can help cover most of your community college tuition. This program is already helping thousands of Matt, did you see the sound actually went out? ...plan for other college costs as well, such as books, fees, and housing. And if you don't qualify for Oregon Promise, don't worry. There are other grants and scholarships that could be a fit for you. Visit www.oregonstudentaid.gov to apply and learn all the details about Oregon Promise and other opportunities. Do we want to go ahead and just replay that? I think we lost the sound pretty early on. Okay. Attention high school seniors and those completing their GED. Would you go to college if you could get help to pay for tuition? Find out if the Oregon Promise can help you. Oregon Promise can help cover most of your community college tuition. This program is already helping thousands attend community college. Best of all, it's a grant, meaning you won't have to repay it later. Interested? Good. Let's see if you qualify. Will you graduate from an Oregon high school or receive your GED? Check. Will your cumulative GPA be 2.5 or higher? Check. Do you plan to attend an Oregon community college within six months of graduation? Check. Will you be an Oregon resident for at least 12 months before attending community college? Check. Now, simply apply for the Oregon Promise at OregonStudentAid.gov. Verify your GPA or GED score and complete the FAFSA or its approved alternate. Once you're approved, you must attend community college within six months of graduating high school or earning your GED and accept all other state and federal grants that you are awarded. Oregon Promise helps pay for tuition, but as you prepare for college, remember to plan for other college costs as well, such as books, fees, and housing. 
And if you don't qualify for Oregon Promise, don't worry. There are other grants and scholarships that could be a fit for you. Visit www.oregonstudentaid.gov to apply and learn all the details about Oregon Promise and other opportunities. Okay, thank you for bearing with us as we navigated that sound issue. Um, as you saw in the video, some of the things that you need to think about um, to see if you qualify for Oregon Promise is, are you a recent high school graduate um, or are you going to be? And, or do you have a GED? And then thinking of your GPA is 2.5 or higher, um, attend Oregon Community College within six months. So this is something I wanna talk about. I think with this um, unique situation we are in currently with some students, a lot of students being virtual, um, I think I've heard a lot of, at least our area, high school students trying to graduate early. So if you do that, make sure you pay attention to that six month, that gap that you have before you start with a community college. Um, Another thing to think about is, have you been an Oregon resident for at least 12 months prior to attending college? Um, I think one thing to kind of pay attention to is the expected family contribution. Um, don't let that hold you up to maybe you're like, there's no way I'll qualify. Go ahead and apply. Um, and even if you're thinking you may go to a four year school, it's really important that you still apply for the Oregon Promise because change, plans change um, and you never know what's gonna happen. So it's always great to go ahead and apply for the Oregon Promise. Um, down here, you can just see a chart so you can look at and see when you're planning on graduating and then um, when you need to make sure to apply by and to start by. The Oregon Promise, you can, if you're in high school as a senior right now, go ahead and start applying for that. And this is how you apply for the Oregon Promise. You can visit the OregonStudentAid.gov website and you can create an account and uh, complete the Oregon Promise application. Uh, the other thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to ensure that you do have a FAFSA or ORSA on, on file and list one of the Oregon, at least one of the Oregon community colleges as one of the schools to receive your FAFSA or ORSA information. Um, so uh, we recommend that you do this and start this process as soon as possible and as soon as you know um, uh, that you're going to apply to an Oregon school or even if you're just considering applying to an um, Oregon Community College that you do start this process because um, say, for example, you've got in your mind that you know that you're going to go to a four-year institution and that you're dead set there, right? And you're, you've got this dream school in mind that you want to attend, but then those plans change, right? And it happens at the, uh, the end of the summer, right before uh, your um, um, uh, uh, fall term starts at that, at that institution. Right. Um, if you had your Oregon Promise application and your FAFSA um, um, on file and everything, um, you um, and, and had the, all those all of those completed by the deadline. Right. You could have your um, uh, tuition and fees covered, um, and um, you um, could have all of that uh, information already on file and there by the deadlines because uh, your plans change and you would have. Uh, your Oregon Community College um, stuff already taken care of because you've taken care of it now. So we encourage you to do this just as backup, even if you're not even considering a community college at this time, right? So that you can uh, do this and get this taken care of because those deadlines come up real soon. Kayleen, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, so just continuing with how do I pay for an Oregon Community College? We went through and talked about gift money, which included the grants and the scholarships. And now I'm gonna talk about earn money. 
So this is through federal work study or part-time, full-time work. So to qualify for work study, you're going to qualify through your FAFSA. Um, work study is where you work on campus. So you, you're an ambassador. You could work at the library, the bookstore, in the financial aid department, student life. There's so many opportunities. Um, I can talk specifically about Central Oregon Community College in the um, recruitment and outreach department that I work in and in admissions. Um, we have student ambassadors that actually help us to go to high schools and help students that are looking at our school. They help with tours around campus and it really helps to connect you to your school and helps you meet people um, and really get extra support by being connected to the school. So it's a great opportunity. And one thing I'll add is that work study is something that you qualify, of course, through the FAFSA. Um, but that is where your funding source comes from. Sometimes students don't qualify for work study at all, right? But that doesn't mean you can't get a job on campus. For example, my first year of college, um, I didn't qualify for, for work study, but, uh, but I still worked um, at the recreation center as a lifeguard my first year. My second year, however, my financial picture changed and I actually did end up qualifying for work study um, my second year. And so it's something that changes every um, year. And so just because you um, uh, quali uh, uh, just because you filed your FAFSA and you, you may qualify for work study, you may not, but that doesn't necessarily mean you can or cannot get a job um, on campus. Um, there's also opportunities to have um, positions, um, even in this remote reality, right? Um, PCC, for example, we still have student workers who are assisting us even remotely um, and who are working as office assistants. Um, our admissions office um, has students who are assisting to um, uh, um, support students, um, even in this remote environment. Matt, quick question. Yes. There's a question on the board that, that's asking, what is uh, FAFSA or ORSCA? Great question. Um, the FAFSA or ORSA um, is, um, um, uh, the FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And, um, and this is something that you'll do annually. Um, and you will uh, do this in order to uh, get uh, the federal um, uh, and state funding that um, 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 that Kayleen mentioned in order to get the um, the loans and the, the excuse me the federal supported loans and unsubsidized loans that Kayleen is going to talk about here uh, in a second. Um, the ORSA is an Oregon specific application for those students who may not qualify for the FAFSA. Um, so um, Kayleen will talk about that as, as well. Yeah, and so the last option, you know, that you can look at for how to pay for Oregon Community College is through loan money. Um, so there's a lot of different types of loans, and these are things that you will have to pay back um, over time. Um, so if you want to go back, go to the next slide, Matt, that'd be great. So as you can see, there's different types of loans and I'm not going to go too much into this because I'm not a financial aid representative, but you can see that the main idea of loans is that you are going to have to pay those back over time and you will end up getting some interest on those loans. Um, there's also options for parent plus loans and private loans. Um, so like Matt was mentioning with the FAFSA, it's really looking at um, your family's qualification for different loans and grants. Um, so filling out the FAFSA or ORSA will determine your eligibility. Um, once you fill that out and you know you decide different schools you would like to have that go to, then you will be pre presented with a package from each of those schools and you will get to decide which ones you like, which loans you want to accept and not accept. Yeah, and um, schools um, um, will send you that financial aid package that Kayleen mentioned. And this is, these are all schools that you indicate on the FAFSA. So when you file it, um, 
um, they'll ask you which schools are you look are you looking to um, apply and seek admission to, um, and you'll declare the community college that you're looking at or the four-year institution and the um, private uh, school. Those schools, in turn, will then send you that financial aid package that Kami mentioned, and that will outline everything that we've just previously talked about: the um, subsidized and unsubsidized loans, if you're eligible for work study. Uh, any grants that are specific to the institution um, that they may be able to uh, supply you with as well. Um, scholarships that are FAFSA specific um, that um, the institution would apply so that you can see how much money that that uh, institution can uh, provide you with to help you pay for school while it is that you are attending. And again, those loans would be money that you have to kind of pay back um, but there's also gift money that Kayleen talked about previously that you do not have to pay back. Um, there's a, uh, other options like the Parent PLUS loan that your parents are taking out on your behalf too, um, and private loans. So there's just a variety of different um, uh, funding opportunities that you can do to kind of make that financial aid package to make college more affordable. I myself, I could not have attended college without filing a FAFSA, right? And so this is something that's very common uh, that people do, whether they attend a community college, whether they attend a four-year institution that's public, or whether they attend a four-year institution that's private. Uh, so that financial aid package is going to help you. Um, the other thing uh, to note is that, again, we mentioned that the Oregon Promise requires that FAFSA or the ORSA to be filed uh, in order for you to get that. However, the money that you receive from Oregon Promise, this is free money for you that you do not have to pay back. So that's gift money um, and everything. And so you can go to an Oregon Community College. If you have that 2.5 GPA or higher, you can go to a community college uh, for almost tuition free, right? And all you have is like your books and your housing and those sorts of expenses. So your, your tuition would be covered. So the other thing that you can consider to um, help you pay for uh, an Oregon Community College is college-specific support programs. And there's a variety of these that are um, available at your community college. Um, and uh, I encourage you to look at these um, at, at the community college that you are specifically uh, 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 considering. And um, I'll just give you a few examples. Um, and um, of course, because I work at PCC, we have a program that is for Portland um, Public School District and, and uh, other select schools uh, throughout our uh, area. Uh, and that's called Future Connect. And this is for students who are uh, low income or they uh, are first generation. Um, and the students can get uh, uh, money uh, that they are eligible for by participating in this program that will help them pay for school. Now, this is in addition to Oregon Promise. Um, so this is going to help you pay for your uh, housing expenses and your books and things like that. There's also um, a program called the College Assistance Migrant Program for students who come from migrant family backgrounds. And uh, this is, again, a cohort-based program that's at PCC, Treasure Valley Community College, and Chemeketa has a program too. Um, and uh, this will help you pay for school as well. So for students who are eligible for it. And then Caitlin can talk about the foundation scholarships at COCC. Yeah, so the foundation scholarship is a scholarship that gives out about $1.2 million every year to students. And it's not just a one year program, you can actually apply for that multiple years. Um, and it really looks at needs based, but also your resilience. Um, and it just a few essay questions that you fill out and it looks at your future plans and your goals. Um, so again, just looking at the specific community college because there's lots of opportunities um, that are out there depending on the college. So one thing we wanted to make sure to mention was the dual enrollment and partnership programs that community colleges have. Um, it's called, in our school, it's called DPP. And what that means is that you are enrolled in both a community college and a university, um, which allows you to save money and stay on track for a bachelor's degree. So if you know that you want to go on and get your bachelor's degree, then you can actually 
at some community college, they might have a partnership with a university where you can be in the DPP program and really experience the best of both worlds. So taking advantage of the resources at both schools, um, the scholarship and benefits from each schools, and then just additional offerings for choices of classes. So, you know, um, looking at different times available and really saving money with some of your prereqs that you're going to need for your bachelor's degree. And you can still be enrolled in both schools. Um, so it's really lower tuition costs. Um, so for example, at Central Oregon Community College, we have a partnership with OSU and OSU Cascades. So um, with that, you get an advisor with OSU Cascades. So it, that's what I mean when I say keeps you on track for your bachelor's degree, because if you know you want to graduate from there with a bachelor's degree, your advisor is going to help you to figure out what classes you can take um, to keep you on track and also save money with us at Central Oregon Community College. And similarly, um, PCC has a uh, dual uh, partnership program with Portland State University. And um, students will um, take classes at Portland Community College in their general, like general education classes. And then they'll take their major courses at Portland State University. And so um, they just get their general education classes at PCC because that's saving them money uh, by doing that. And then they are taking classes um, at PSU because they, that's where they want to spend their time getting their four-year uh, courses uh, for their bachelor's degree. Um, and there's a shuttle that goes in between PCC and PSU that's free for students to take and everything. So they have that convenience um, and the best of both worlds uh, that um, uh, Kayleen had mentioned, which they get the benefits of that four-year institution, um, but then the cost savings um, at uh, a community college. Quick question. There's a question on the board that asks, can I be dual enrolled and use the Oregon Promise? Matt, and I can answer that. Um, so that's a great it, question. Sorry. What's that? I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, okay. So the question was, can I dual enroll and use the Oregon Promise? And that's a great question and such a good thing to be thinking about. And the answer is yes. So when you're doing the DP pro DPP program, at least at Central Oregon Community College, I can't speak for all, um, you'll pick a homeschool. So if you wanna take advantage of that Oregon Promise, you'll have to pick um, Central Oregon Community College as your homeschool. But yes, you can take advantage of the Oregon Promise. You'll just make Central Oregon Community College your homeschool and use that there. Does that answer the question? Yes. Another question. Um, does dual enrollment still cost more than just uh, community college or is it similar? So um, I'll, I'll uh, answer that. Um, in general, um, it would probably be between the cost of going to a community college full-time and going to a four-year institution full-time. Would you agree with that, Kayleen? Yeah, yeah because I, what definitely. you're doing is you're, yeah, you're, what you're doing is you are paying the respective fees for the institution that you're taking credits from. So um, of course, it's gonna be dependent on the actions that you take. What I mean by that is if you take all of your credits at the four-year institution, you're going to be paying a lot more than if you took most of your classes at the community college because that's where you, the cheaper tuition rate is. But if you split it up as it's intended, right, you're duly enrolled, you're taking half your credits here, and you're taking half your credits at, 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 at half your credits here at the, the community college and half your credits at the four-year institution, it's gonna be right in the middle of going full-time at a community college and full-time at a uh, four-year institution. So um, it's like right in between. It's the way the program is designed to do, but that's if you kind of uh, navigate it in that, in that way. Yeah, and I think I'll add to that is just um, thinking of your long-term goals and if DPP is the right fit for you. So, do you want to get a bachelor's degree or are you just looking for associates or going, you know, for one of the CTE options. So looking at your 
long-term goals and determining if that is a bachelor's degree, then DPP might be the right option for you. And I would recommend looking into it. And the other thing to kind of note as, as well, for most dual partnership programs, you must be admissible to the four-year institution. And so it's not like a, 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 a workaround to where you're kind of um, uh, trying to get in through a, a, the a four-year institution in a, in a different way. You still need to be admissible to that four-year school. Fantastic. If I choose the community college as my home school to use the Oregon Promise, can I still use the merit money that the university is offering me? So, great question. So, um, it's going to be dependent on the terms and conditions of the merit money, uh, most likely. And so, they'll outline that. Um, um, they'll outline that um, based off of the um, uh, uh, conditions of the scholarship or the merit uh, award that you do receive. And that may be true. It, what may be true at the community college might not necessarily be true at the four-year institution. So, um, for example, um, the um, uh, for your institution, they may provide you with a scholarship to in this dual partnership program, but you may have to take X amount of credits at the four year institution in order to keep that merit award. The community college may give you a merit award, but you may have to have, uh, you may need to be full time in order to um, obtain that. So um, it is kind of reading that fine print of the merit award in order to kind of understand like, what uh, specifically you're agreeing to in order to accept that uh, scholarship award. Yeah, and I think, think looking, in, looking into um, what community college and what university you're wanting to do that DPP program with and working with that financial aid department and they will help you and it really depends on where you're thinking about going, so. So, how to apply to uh, an Oregon Community College? Of course, most um, institutions um, prefer that their applications be submitted online and you can access them via each of the institution's um, websites. Um, but we encourage you not to wait until the last minute um, and to get that process started uh, as soon as possible and submit the application as soon as possible. Um, and the reason why is not necessarily because um, uh, as open access institutions, you can apply uh, really like a, a, a week or two weeks or a few weeks even before classes begin. Um, but we want to make sure that we're setting you up uh, to be successful. Um, and uh, to do that, right, we want to make sure that we can get you um, into uh, the pool for scholarship consideration and send you timely notification for placement and advising and financial aid and everything that really those are the things that you have to kind of start earlier and that have deadlines and everything. So while the admission application, you can apply like really late in the process and start classes the very like next week, right, really, but for all of the other things that you kind of need to do so that you're not as rushed and that we can get you in the pool uh, for all of the other things like the merit awards that we talked about, um, and that we can get you properly advised and stuff like that to kind of figure out your goals and everything. That's really what we want to do is to get you um, set up to be successful for all of these sorts of things uh, that take a, a, a lot longer. Uh, they have deadlines attached to them and everything. Um, so the admission application is to kind of ensure that we're able to timely communicate with you. So, you know, we just wanted to end with an action list. Um, so being here is a great step. Um, it shows that you're trying to learn more and really looking into different schools that might be a good fit for you. Um, so before I go into list, I just wanted to say, even though a lot of schools may be virtual, you can still connect and, you know, a lot of schools are offering virtual webinars or virtual tours. Um, so really still researching those schools and looking into them and trying to find ways to research if it is the right fit for you. Um, but 
file your FAFSA or ORSA as soon as possible. Um, that opened October 1st, so you can do that now and it's better to do sooner than later. Um, and then applying for schools that are applying for a school that you feel like is the right fit for you. So you can start working through those admission steps that Matt was talking about. So you're not feeling rushed and you're set up for success for looking for those scholarships that might be a good fit and you might um, be able to apply for. So applying for the Oregon Promise. Again, even if you are not sure you want to attend a community college, it's still good to apply for the Oregon Promise because plans change and you never know, you know, where you might end up. So I would recommend or we would recommend doing that um, and then filling out scholarships, you know, really taking the time to do those and it it can be worth your time to go through and find different scholarships and looking at that specific school and what scholarships they offer um, is a great thing to do. Do you have anything to add, Matt? I think you covered it. Uh, one quick question. Uh, when is the best time to apply to a, to a community college uh, and the questioner is a junior in high school at the moment? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So first of all, it's awesome that you're here and you're listening and just being engaged as a junior. Um, it's great to not wait until the last minute. Um, so that really depends on when you want to start. So if you're thinking, you know, after your senior year, if you want to start in the fall, um, mid year, your senior year is when I would recommend. Um, I don't think there's again, Matt, like Matt said, you can apply up to right before the term that you want to start. Um, but you can really, I would say mid year senior year is a good time. So you're not feeling rushed. Fantastic. But you can apply now. So Fantastic. All right. Um, is it okay to apply for the Oregon Promise, but not end up going to, co to community college in the next six months? Are there any penalties or punishments for that? There's, um, so in order to receive the funds for Oregon Promise, you must attend within six months of your graduation. Uh, so if you are a senior um, this year and you're graduating in May, for example, or June, for example, um, you must attend by that fall, right? Um, really, uh, in order to get funds for that. Now, if you just apply and you end up doing something else, right? You end up doing a gap year, you end up going to a four-year private school or public school, um, there's no, or, or you just go into the workforce, right? You do something else altogether. Um, you, um, um, uh, there's no penalty to you, right? You're not taking out a loan. You're not um, agreeing to uh, accept those funds and you don't have to pay them back or anything like that. So I don't know if that's the uh, reason for the question or anything, but um, um, it's just, you're just filling out the application for consideration is what it is, so. Yeah, good, good job, man. But all right, I had another question from a junior. Are there any scholarships or grants that I should be applying for for this year as a junior? Good question. Uh, actually, there are scholarships that are available for uh, if, if even if you're not a senior, right? Um, I myself, I got a scholarship when I was a junior um, in a high school. Uh, um, so uh, they, it was two thousand bucks, believe it or not, and. I, it was two per, per state. I know it was a national scholarship, it was two per state. And um, it, it was myself and uh, it, uh, my friend from my same high school got it. And so um, uh, I don't think many people applied for it. <laughs> so if two people in the, in, in the state of Oregon got it, and, uh, we both went to the same high school. So uh, they exist uh, uh, in order to find out information on those scholarships. Um, resources for you um, would be this website right here, Oregon, Oregon goes to college.org. Um, another great resource uh, is your counseling college, your counseling center and your college and career center. Uh, they have a number of different scholarships that are available for you um, if, uh, to um, 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 uh, consider for, uh, to be considered for. Uh, they keep a list um, of scholarships that are in your local area, uh, but also nationally uh, that you can apply for um, that um, 
can be based off of your year in school. Uh, so for example, if you're a senior, of course, there's gonna be a lot, uh, but if you're even junior, sophomore, freshman for scholarships that you can look into as well. Kaylin, do you have anything to add there? Okay. No, that's great. Do you want to go over resources? Oh, this is me. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. The, uh, for resources, um, this is a great website um, that um, is put on through the state of Oregon's gear up program, um, OregonGoesToCollege.org. Um, this is something that all um, Oregon colleges and universities, community colleges, public and private, uh, institutions has a lot of information on it um, and consolidates it in one place. Um, it is um, uh, a, a thing where it, it is a hub for um, a, a college checklist, um, how to apply for college, how to pay for college, and then also there's an app that's available online that uh, contains all this information. It's a really good app too. It's got five stars on, on review. It's not like one of those ones that is like kind of clunky and everything. So um, it's a great resource for you. Uh, and uh, we highly encourage all of you to either do that uh, website or, or check out and download the app uh, as well. So uh, if you're just um, looking at Oregon schools or even just need something to kind of get you organized, uh, this is a great resource for you uh, to kind of look into. Um, and I think you kind of touched on this one uh, earlier in the presentation, Matt. Um, but basically, uh, it's the question is, if a community college and a university don't have a dual enrollment program, how would I go about applying for the, to the university? Will I apply for the university once I finish the community college? Yeah, so um, that, uh, great question. So um, the first step, of course, is, is, is if you're attending to go to a, a university or a college after you go to a community college, is first go to the community college and work towards completing your degree. Now, while you're doing that, you're going to be um, assigned an academic advisor um, who is in your um, academic area of interest. So let's just say, for example, your goal is to be a doctor and you want to first start at a community college and you're going the science route and you're going to be a biology major with pre-med option, right? And so um, what you'll do is you'll work uh, towards your uh, associate's degree uh, in uh, science um, or biology and you're kind of doing the pre-med route so that you are um, best prepared for medical school. Now, once you get near completion, you'll be working with your advisor in this, um, 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 at the community college during this process. Once you get near completion, you'll be checking classes off your list. You'll be letting them know your intentions of going to, of course, a four-year school and then eventually medical school. You will um, uh, um, be asking them which classes are transferable to that um, for your institution, which classes should I be taking to best prepare myself for medical school? And then once you get near to completion, they'll have you apply uh, to uh, the four-year school. So let's just say you start a PCC and you do that, and your and a goal is to go to Portland State. And um, once you get near completion to um, your associate's degree, you'll apply to uh, PSU. And um, it, the process starts all over just like it is right now. And we want to make sure that you are considered for scholarships as well as filing your FAFSA and declaring PSU as the school to receive your FAFSA information uh, as well. And um, then you get admitted to PSU. And then once you get towards completing your degree at PSU, you're going to be doing the same thing for medical school as well. Um, and that's that graduate uh, uh, level degree. Um, that you're applying for. So the process starts again. The key thing I think to know is that there's people there, people to help you along the way. So um, Kayleen and I work in admissions at the community college level. There are people who work in admissions at the uh, four-year uh, university level, and there are people who work in admissions at the medical school level. And those are people are going to be great resources for you 
Uh, so always, um, my best piece of advice is don't hesitate to ask those people uh, for help and assistance and support along the way, um, because it can be a very confusing journey. Um, and we're the people who are here and it's our jobs uh, to help you through it. And so if you're the oldest person in your family and you're the first one to kind of go off to school, right? And this is something that is, you're not familiar with, right? Uh, there are resources for you and people to help you through it. So don't hesitate to ask the, the um, uh, people at the college side in the admissions offices uh, for help and support, um, whether that's about financial aid, whether that's about scholarship, whether that's the admission application, but also at your high school too, uh, your counseling staff. Uh, they're wonderful people who want to help you um, through that next step as well. Uh, so uh, go to your college and career center or go to your counseling office and ask them for support as well. Uh, because together between the admissions office and your college uh, and career center and your counseling office, uh, we all work in partnership in helping you uh, transition from wherever you're at uh, to that next step. Fantastic. Fantastic. Any, any closing remarts, Killeen? Or is, or is that, I think, Ms. Matt, oh, here I, it? Yeah, Matt, that's great. And I think here's our emails. If you need anything or if there's any follow-up questions that come up after this presentation, please reach out. We're here to help. Fantastic. I think we had one last question. Are there, are there ways to attend community college online during normal times? Yeah, so different community colleges are going to have online options for classes. Um, during normal times. Um, so just look at that specific school and you can kind of see the different options. For example, at Central Oregon Community College, um, we have online courses available. We have in, uh, remote um, and some very few in person currently, but it's a combination typically no matter what, so.